Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to the 2021 annual meeting of the Brush Square Museums Foundation. It is my privilege to serve as the director of the O. Henry and Susanna Dickinson Museum in Brush Square. Eight years ago, the foundation and I embarked upon a mission to protect and restore the O. Henry Museum for future generations. We conserved the museum's most important artifacts. Today, thanks to the foundation, the O. Henry Museum is only months away from being fully restored and the O. Henry family piano, an 1860 Horace Waters Square Grand, is ready to be played. Once again, I want to thank the Brush Square Museum's Foundation for their steadfast support and to thank the O. Henry players for their talents and efforts to keep O. Henry stories alive. So now, please let me introduce Mr. Bernard Mulberg, Piano Conservator. Hello, my name is Bernard Mulberg. Today is March 13th, 2021. I'm speaking to you from my piano restoration shop on a mesa in Blanco County. Uh, it was our privilege to be able to restore this square grand piano, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, significant parts of the collection at the O. Henry Museum in downtown Austin, Texas. I first saw this piano in 1995. Uh, my shop was in Austin at that time, and uh, it was a pretty sad old piano. It was built in 1861 to 1864. So even, even uh, 27 years ago, it was still old and it needed a lot of help. So uh, over the years, uh, I've spoken with uh, uh, inquiries from uh, Parks and Recreation Department who administers the museum. And uh, I kept saying, yes, uh, we still could do this restoration. You'll just have to pay me my evaluation fee because I haven't seen it for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, etc. cetera. And uh, nothing ever came about. But uh, Melissa Parr uh, has been uh, on this case for several years now. And so two years ago uh, in, uh, well, let's see, it would have been 20, uh, 19, 2019, in uh, February, I had I provided a restoration estimate. I visited the museum and refreshed my memory about the piano, and uh, we came up with a list of conservation uh, restoration techniques to bring this piano back into a good state of, of uh, durability as well as uh, playing capacity. So um, right now, uh, it's been two years since the piano came to our shop. And we finished our work in, I would say, the, uh, probably the fall of 2020. And uh, right now it's just waiting to go back to the museum where uh, I understand that uh, M Melissa Parr and I made a bet that we would get the piano restoration finished before the restoration of the O. Henry Museum. So I think it's perhaps the case she's going to have to buy me a margarita somewhere and maybe even my staff members. So we'll see how that all turns out. Um, anyway, uh, Melissa did ask me to tell you a little bit about how I came to restore pianos in general. I had an early work experience working for Otto Hoffman, the notable pipe organ builder in South Austin. I worked with Otto for close to three years and realizing I did not want to become a pipe organ builder or technician, I went ahead and uh, started doing things that uh, enabled me to get my own shop going where I was doing some string instrument repair as well as uh, piano refinishing. I didn't know too much about it. By 1980, I went into partnership with uh, another technician, Bob Hunter, who uh, had, had he knew a lot more about pianos than I did at that time. So from 1980 to uh, uh, 19, uh, beginning of 1984, we were a partnership. I became a sole proprietor when I bought his interest in the business out in 1984, and I was in that shop in uh, the warehouse district off of East St. Elmo Road in South Austin uh, until the November of 1999. At that point, I had been fortunate to find this property here in uh, on the Mesa in Blanco County, where I was able to build my current shop and eventually uh, a home as well. And so uh, uh, I guess it'll be 21 years now that I've, I've been uh, doing my trade here in this nice remote spot on, on the Mesa in Blanco County. So um, 
the type of work um, uh, that pianos need of any kind, it's just nothing but one detail after another. Uh, there's a mechanical system, there's a structural system, there's the cosmetics, what does it look like? And so uh, we, we address all of those things. Our goal is to do the best job that we can under the circumstances. And we, uh, I'm not saying that it's easy, <laughs> but it, it, does, uh, it does require uh, persistence to keep learning. Uh, you make mistakes and you learn from them and uh, try not to make those same mistakes a second time. So uh, a piano that's 100, over 150 years old, such as this Horace Waters that lives at the uh, O'Henry Museum, um, you don't do the same things you would with, say, a 1920s Steinway or Mason and Hamlin Grand that are basically modern pianos, even though they're also pushing 100 years old. Uh, th this uh, type of piano, the rectangular shape, was popular as a home piano. Primarily, it was not something that the artists of the day would use. Uh, commerce uh, follows what the demand is, even in the 1860s. People liked the rectangular shape of the piano because it could go into a corner, it could go up against the wall, you could put your, uh, your portraits and seashell collection on the lid. So um, it, it was very popular as a home piano. And, um, you know, the, the best musical form for a piano is what the Germans called the flugel shape. That flugel means wing, like the wing of a dove or perhaps even a buzzard. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the uh, flugel shape is really what pianos want to be like. The, the acoustics, the physics of it just work out that way. However, given the, the motivation, uh, they can be made into all kinds of shapes. Uh, some are upright pianos fitting up against the wall. The square grand is essentially a rectangular box where it is supported by four legs and has a pedal lyre to it. Uh, and um, it has a t it, it, the tone is, is somewhat limited compared to a, a more modern piano. They are simply a, a different caliber, a different uh, orientation of piano, and it's not really fair to expect them to sound like a, a, a modern piano would or perform in the same way. So all we can do is acknowledge that this was um, what they were at the point that they were being built and try to make them as reliable and uh, sound as nice and feel as nice to the player as we can. So the conservation work means that we're not really replacing wholesale uh, sets of parts because these aren't even really available. So we're restoring all the teeny little wooden parts and we're replacing all the leathers and the cloths and we did get new hammers that uh, I think are probably quite similar to what the original ones would have been. So um, after our year and a half of work, this piano is playable. It can be tuned. It's our sincere hope that the O. Henry Museum can, uh, can cherish and use this piano in their mission. Uh, I think it, it's going to have a good potential for the museum uh, for, particularly if, you, if they host... Um, uh, musical ensembles, uh, singers. This uh, this will uh, for a small. It's a small space, and uh, but it will certainly hold its own uh, for any kind of music that might be going on when uh, uh, they schedule something uh, as as part of what the museum uh, is is doing. So uh, we're hoping that it will find some some good use and good appreciation when that's going on. Uh, it will. It is a little old. It's still old. Um, we've gotten it in great shape, but that said, it's going to need very regular service and maintenance. And uh, we have uh, we have a fine piano technician, Nathan Cook, scheduled to uh, do the first four tunings. And it it is my hope that the museum will continue to engage Nathan for keeping up with this piano because he is familiar with it and. He is one of the few technicians that can and will tune and maintain an old square grand piano. So it, it's, it's been my uh, uh, pleasure and my privilege to restore this piano. Uh, the folks in my shop have heard me swear off of restoring square grands. I have probably restored 15 or 16 or 17 of them. And uh, so I I'm glad that I was able to get this piano back in good condition for for the O. Henry Museum. And so uh, thank you to all, all the folks uh, that made this possible. Bernard Mulberg, Mulberg Piano Restoration, uh, signing off. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good day.